Hello everyone, that manga kid here to do my October manga haul. It's a big one, so I'm gonna get right into it. Uh, some series I continued this month. I bought volume three of Haven't You Heard, I'm Sakamoto. Volumes two and four are out of print um, currently, so unfortunately I will not be getting those two anytime soon, but I have read this whole series from my library. It's four volumes long, uh, and it's hilarious. And because I've already read it, I don't mind that I only own volume one and three and I can read it because it's very, it's a comedy about this boy who's perfect at everything. It is absolutely hysterically funny. Uh, highly recommend reading it if, uh, if you can get your hands on it. Um, but yeah, hysterically funny. Then I got volume nine of The Girl From The Other Side. Haven't read this one yet because volume eight annoyed me and uh, I had already pre-ordered this one. I'm, I'm ready for this series to end. I'm tired of it. I just want it to finish. I want to know how it ends, but I wasn't in the mood to force myself to read this one right now while I'm still mad about volume eight. Um, it's just dragging on and I'm tired of it, so I'm ready for it to finish. Then I got volume two of Giant. This is Hiroya Oku's newest uh, English publication. Um, this one's put out by Seven Seas, and it's about this porn star and this high school boy who, um, who meet, and she has this thing on her arm that can turn her into, like, a giant, and so obviously there's some alien stuff going on, there's some weird conspiracy, uh, stuff going on, um, and it's pretty good. This one has quite a lot of explicit content in it, so I will not open it up. Then... I got volume two of Jealousy. This is Starlet Berico's most recent series in English. Um, this is fantastic. I love the gold cover too. Uh, this is a Yakuza series. It is a prequel to um, fourth generation head Tayo, Tayo, Tayuki something. Fourth generation, oh, Tatsuyuki Oyamoto. Um, this is about his father, I believe. And the guy from that series, it's, it's his father. Uh, it's a Yakuza series. There's so much explicit content in here and violence and gore. So I will not open it up. I'll show you this page because that's fine. It's a colored page. But this is excellent. I think volume three is the final one. And it comes out early next year, I believe. But I could be wrong about that. Um, but the first two are so good. But you need to be okay with um, uh, very violent like it doesn't shy away from being violent it's a yakuza story story for sure um so it's kind of gruesome at, at quite a few points but it's very very good so far then i picked up um girl got game volume one i found this at one of my local comic book stores I want this series so bad. It's a, a shoujo basketball series about this girl who pretends to be a boy and goes to a boarding school because uh, her father wants her to play on the basketball team. And so, yeah, it's pretty good after this first volume. I really enjoyed it. Obviously, she's going to fall in love because it's shoujo. Uh, but, yeah, it's really good. I only own volume one and I bought volume eight from a thrift store a couple, maybe over a year ago or a couple years ago now. Uh, it's 10 volumes in total and unfortunately I don't have any more to read. Also this, this is like embossed, you can't really tell, but that's kind of cool too. But anyway, older Tokyo Pop Shoujo that I'm, have been interested in for years, so I was happy to at least find volume one. Then I got volume five of A Tropical Fish Yearns for Snow. Really cute, uh, girls love, innocent girls love series. Um, they're in an aquarium club, so you get lots of fish, which is really cute. And this one was a good volume as well. I don't know how long this series is, but it's one I enjoy every time a volume comes in. And we got volume five of Love Me, Love Me Not by Ayo Sakisaka. Uh, another great one, great shoujo that I'm really, really enjoying. I'm not going to open it because I don't want to spoil anything. Um, but yeah, really enjoying Love Me, Love Me Not still as well as volume 10 of Shortcake Cake. Very cute cover here. This one is coming to an end. Uh, these volumes are quite thin now, unfortunately. Uh, so, but that's, it's fine. I won't open this one either because there's spoilers, but 
uh, we're getting deeper into the family situations of some of our characters. But this is a fun boarding house series where I like all of the characters. Sometimes there's a character or two that you're like, eh, but this one I actually enjoy all of them. So that's nice. And then I found uh, volume nine of Honey and Clover came back in stock. Um, I'm missing volume eight still, and then I'll have all 10 of them at that point. But volume eight and nine were out of stock for a long time, and randomly volume nine came back in stock, so I ordered it immediately. This is a really slow paced, beautiful coming of age story about these college students who are at an art, uh, art college. So some of them are sculptors and painters and things. Um, and it's just a really beautiful story about like first love and unrequited love and coming into your own and, you know, in a different way from high school where you're trying to decide your future. These, these people have decided they want to be, you know, artists and architects and things like that. Um, things that deal with art, uh, but now they're trying to find legitimate careers and, you know, enjoy their college life. They're, they're all the different ages too. Like they, um, some of them are newer in college while some of them are, you know, looking to graduate soon. So um, yeah, it's a very beautiful slow paced story and I hope to find volume eight soon. Then I got volume five of Baki Monogatari, beautiful cover with Osh Oshino on it. I think his name's Oshino. Um, this is like a aberration, supernatural, uh, ridiculous, lots of text, but it really didn't take me, it doesn't take me that long to read it, surprisingly, d uh, despite the amount of text in it. But um, yeah, trip down memory lane because I loved the anime back in the day and Ogre's art is excellent um, and fits the vibe of this story so well. Then Finally, we got volume 10 of Welcome to the Ballroom. Beautiful cover. I didn't read this yet because it just came in and I, um, I kind, it's been so long since I read volume nine that I may want to reread that one first just so I remember because I feel like they're in the middle of a competition right now and I want to kind of recap what is happening so that I don't just go into this without, you know, remembering what's going on. Um, something interesting, this is a matte cover. All of the others are glossy covers, so I'm not sure why Kodansha decided to do that. I don't care, um, but it was just something immediately. I was like, I don't think the others are matte finished covers and they're not. They're all glossy covers. So that's kind of interesting to me. But anyway, excited to have it nonetheless. And then we got volume four of Blue Flag, another excellent volume with a beautiful cover, uh, beautiful drama, romance, um, another kind of coming of age, deals with LGBT identities and Whatnot. I'm not going to open this one either because we're it's only eight volumes long and now we're halfway through it. I don't want to spoil anything in there. Um, then we got volume three of Perfect World, a Jose title about uh, these adults who knew each other in high school. Now they meet as adults and the boy is in a wheelchair or the man is in a wheelchair. And in this one, we're dealing with, you know, <clears throat> the impact that family and expectations and feeling inadequate uh, on both sides uh, can do to a relationship. And so, you know, our characters are kind of trying to figure out if this is even right for them and if they're not making each other happy in any way and they're just making each other nervous and anxious and miserable and scared, then is it even worth it um, to be together? So a bit of a heavy volume for sure. Then we got Volume four of Sweat and Soap. This was excellent. This is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful adult romance. Um, he's 30, I think, and she's like 26. And so it is definitely adults, definitely workplace, beautiful. Like it really doesn't, especially like the sniffing thing, which he, he has an obsession with her scent. Um, which is prevalent in the first couple volumes for sure. This one, it kind of died down a little bit. Um, now we're just like, we're just getting into the, the, the lives of these adults who are trying to think about their futures together now because, you know, they're not, they're not super young people who are just looking to date for no reason. They're like thinking about, is marriage on the table here? Should we be moving in together? Should we be telling our friends and family that we're together now. Um, 
just really fun. This is the this is the romance that I've been waiting for. Um, I just feel like there isn't really anything else being published in English right now that is so beautifully done in terms of an adult romance that has a little bit like it has sexual themes but it's not overly explicit it's just enough for you to go yeah they're adults of course they have a physical relationship um but it's so cute and sweet and fun i can't wait to see where that series goes and then we got the big one Ugh. the fifth colossal edition of attack on titan so this compiles volumes 21 through 25 or something yeah 21 through 25 i guess uh these release really slowly so i don't know when we're gonna get a next one but i'm i've only read the first three colossal editions so uh i still have i guess 10 volumes worth of content to read but glad to have this one and this cover is excellent then we completed how hard ride volume 13 finally we have it um love this series loved it all the way through can't wait to read it again in the future another complete one volume eight of oh maidens in your savage season uh this was obviously supposed to be finished much earlier in the year but of course everything got pushed back uh so i'm very happy to finally have this beautiful cover the spines are always gorgeous because they're all these really vibrant colors and together they look excellent. Uh, this one is about these girls in a literature club who are learning, you know, about lust and love and sexuality and uh, their hormones are, of course, raging and they're trying to reconcile their um, bodily urges with what they believe to be pure and, uh, you know, it's, it's really entertaining. It's beautiful. Um, now Emoto's art is excellent as always, and Mario Kata did, did a really good job with this story. So definitely check this one out if you haven't already. Then got a couple uh, Kuma titles. We got Canis, Dear Mr. Rain. Um, this was really, really good about this hat maker uh, who meets this kind of... Uh, He's laying in the rain and he's clearly injured and this guy's a bit of a stuck-up dude at his work so all of his employees keep quitting or he keeps firing them I guess because uh, they don't work to his standard and so he is desperately in need of an employee and he finds this guy who he brings home because he's injured and he feeds him and you know lets him stay there and he, and he asks him if he can work for him. Um, it's really beautiful. It's not explicit at all. Um, Despite it, despite Kuma being a Faku imprint, that's a beautiful. I love the character designs. It kind of reminds me of a mixture of like uh, Asumiko Nakamura and um, uh, oh my goodness, the Natsume Ono. There's there's the name, because um, it's so. It's just interesting art to me, uh, but there are more of these Canis stories uh, revolving around these characters, I believe, but uh, as far as I know, Kuma has not made any intention or releasing of releasing the other ones at this point. Uh, I guess they'll see how this one sells and then hopefully they will license the other ones because I'm very interested to learn more about this, but this can be a standalone story. Um, on its own even if they don't decide to publish anymore but it's got this beautiful like the silver foiling sort of situation going on is really nice um i i really enjoyed it and then the other kuma title i picked up is canon otaku like me really be an idol this is the only explicit um legitimate uh like basically porn series that kuma has released thus far all of their other titles have been like barely any kissing if at all um so it's kind of interesting to me that the the faku imprint is not printing anything sex related except for this one so far uh and this one was my least favorite out of all the things that i bought from kuma so far so i mean yeah it's about this boy who dresses like an idol um and this boy in his class who um likes when he dresses like an idol and they get together and they film idol singing videos and they have sex and i will 
maybe find some art. Um, it's kind of cute, but it really didn't have much substance. I didn't really care for these characters at all. Uh, yeah, I just, whatever. It was fine. Then I got The Kingdom of the Gods. This is a new Viz release, and it is complete in this volume. Um, didn't know much about this. I read a review of it uh, from Otaku USA, I believe, that said that the two stories contained in here were not very fleshed out. Um, they were kind of abruptly finished, and I think the second one's called like Burning Hell or something. So the first one is kind of a zombie-esque historical situation with cannibals. And the second, um, the second story is an island where the world's worst, cr the worst criminals get sent, and there's a, a cannibal and a, um, uh, doctor who experiments on, on dissecting people constantly are both living there, and it's quite funny. Um, yeah, I'll definitely do a, re a fuller review of this volume. Quite enjoyed it, especially for you know October. It was a fun read. Another fun October read was another. Uh, this is a four-in-one volume, which I don't know who made that decision. Clearly someone at Yen Press thought that was a good idea. Um, it was fine, but I think it would have been better suited to two, uh, two two-in-ones rather than one four-in-one. But uh, this is a story of a high school boy who moves to a small town. There is some kind of curse happening in his school, and people are dying and there's a mysterious female classmate that nobody else seems to be able to see. Uh, and he's like, why does nobody else see you? What's going on? And nobody will give him answers. And yeah, everyone's dying and now they don't know what's going on. Um, I watched the anime for this back when, I, when it was coming out, when I was much younger. Loved it. And so the manga was something I always wanted to pick up. There is a light novel uh, with a beautiful cover which I believe that Yen Press also released in English physically, but I could be wrong. Um, I don't read light novels though, so I'm not interested in that, but the anime I think was better than the manga because the anime could expand on a lot of things and we got a lot more gruesome deaths with the anime that just didn't make it into the manga, unfortunately. So I think that this is a good companion to the anime, but I, I feel like um, I feel like the light novel is probably a better bet to get like the full story, and then the anime is good if you want some really gory shenanigans. Um, and then this is a good companion to the anime or the light novel, but I don't know that it's on its own a really good story. Um, and then, something I'm super stoked about, I got both volumes of Message to Adolf, which of course, as most people know, was completely unavailable for many years now. And um, back on the market. So I got part one and two, beautiful hardcovers, and I paid like $20 each Canadian for these, which is excellent. Because a book like this now, um, something like that, like any hardcovers now, especially of this size for manga, go for like $50 now in Canada. Um, so the fact that I was able to get these for $20 each, brand new, is excellent. Um, haven't read it yet, but I'm looking forward to it. Uh, it's a lot of, from what I know, it's like three men named uh, Adolf, uh, one of them being Adolf Hitler. Um, and yeah, I'm interested to read it because I really like Osamu Tezuka's darker adult stories. They are very captivating. Um, and this is one that I've wanted for so long, so super stoked. Next up, new series, Love Me For Who I Am. This is a non-binary character who was working in a maid cafe that is um, all male assigned at birth individuals who are either um, kind of cosplaying or cross-dressing um, or uh, trans uh, girls. Um, this one is, I will definitely do a first impressions, like a full first impressions. Um, I liked it. I'm, I'm glad it exists. I feel... I'm hoping it gets better because it felt a little bit clunky to me. It felt a little bit like too much like it was explaining these identities to me and explaining them in a way that didn't feel right. Um, it felt like to me, especially based on the author's note in the back, that the, the, 
mangaka is not part of this community, which is fine. Uh, and they've clearly done research, but it felt like they had researched and are telling us based on their research what these identities are versus somebody who is actually in the community entrenched in it and like really understands fully these identities, though I could very well be wrong. And it also could be a uh, cultural thing because, um, you know, people who exist in the LGBT community in North America and where I live in Canada you know, exist in the world differently than LGBT people in other countries. And I understand that. So it could also be just a, a cultural barrier thing of like, I'm bringing to the table my understanding of these identities based on where I live and the people I interact with. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, the cover is adorable as well. But yeah, it was a, it was a pretty good first volume. I'm glad I finally got my hands on it because it was out of stock for a while. But uh, yeah. I'm interested to see where it goes, for sure. Next up, we got Birds of Shangri-La. This is Ranma Rosaria's newest English release with a beautiful cover. <laughs> uh, this one is about a an island with an all-male all brothel. This straight guy needs money desperately, and he is a very stoic, calm guy, uh, who the rich man who owns this um, brothel wants him to come work there and even though he's straight because all of his birds as he calls them the boys there the men there uh have wanted a straight guy to work there for a while uh so this guy here is his new kind of work trainer he's training him in the ways of their their job and uh yeah it's really good like really really good of course you have to be okay with uh you know, are open-minded to kind of uh, sex work in that industry, but it's very much like the the clients are handpicked by the rich dude who owns the uh, the the brothel. Um, but there is a bit of violence because of the backstories of some of these characters. I don't know how long this is going to be. It's going to be um, or the second volume. I don't think comes out till mid next year, unfortunately, because this was excellent, and I want more of this immediately. Uh, the other thing too, this is a, a matte finish cover, which I don't have any other Sublime works with a matte finish cover. I noticed immediately and was like, yes, I love matte finish covers. And this one is so beautiful with the sunset. Um, and I just, I wasn't expecting this cover because I didn't know that this was uh, what it looked like because I pre-ordered this before the cover was released. Um, and yeah, so that was a fun surprise in the mail. Then I bought volume three of Let's Dance a Waltz. This is an older Kodansha series about, it's a shoujo about waltzing, I'm assuming. Um, ballroom dance. I don't have the first two because this was so cheap. I got this for like $4 brand new. Uh, I will get the other two to complete the series, but for now. Next up, I got two volumes, six and seven of Everyone's Getting Married, Jose series. I have not read it yet. I don't have any more of it. These again, I got for like $5 each brand new. I will get the other ones to complete it. I believe it's 10 volumes long, um, but I'm very excited for it. It looks really fun and cute. Then from one of my used bookstores, I bought the first nine volumes of Black Lagoon. Um, they were $8 each, which is not super cheap for used books, but they're in like perfect condition. And I really wanted to support my used bookstore right now because um, they're they're struggling and I would hate to see them go out of business um, because of the pandemic. So I, you know, was interested in this series and decided to pick it up now, support them and, um, you know, get an interesting series out of it. But I believe there's like 11 of these out right now but some of these are much older as you can see they've got the older viz logo on them so this has been releasing for a very long time so i'm assuming it was on hiatus forever uh, because volume 11 was just released recently i believe but it's basically about this team of like kind of like bandit sort of situation of they take on some odd jobs of you know, uh, collecting bounties on people or stealing something for someone or, you know, whatever. And it's very violent, lots of guns and stuff. Um, 
but yeah, it's I've only read the first two volumes so far. It's pretty good. Uh, a lot of fun. I mean, it's not something I typically would be super interested in, but I am excited to read it nonetheless, because sometimes I just want something that I can... Uh, something that has a good story, because it does actually have a lot of... It has a lot of text in it, and Volume 2 was actually really good. It had a lot of... It had a couple story arcs that were really cool. Um, I do like mysteries. I like kind of more violent um, uh, stories, especially about, you know, gangsters or... or uh, things like that and so i'm hoping that this series will deliver on on that um next up another used bookstore by uh shadow star this is volume four uh this is a uh mohiro kito series but unfortunately it's it's a very old dark horse release i don't have any more of it uh Mo mohiro kito does a lot of like kids in deadly situation sort of stories, and this one I don't think is any exception to that. Um, I believe this also involves some kind of robot situation. But yeah, I mean, I figured I'd pick it up because hopefully in the future I can find more of this. And then these I bought new, Bokurano R's, also by Mohiro Kito. I've read this before from my library. It's 11 volumes long, some of them are out of print. I got these for really cheap, brand new, so uh, hopefully I can collect the rest of it because it was an excellent series about these kids who have to pilot this big robot. Um, and there's a lot of death in these and a lot of sadness and backstories of these kids. And um, yeah, it's really, really good. I've read, it's been a, at least a year and a bit since I read it from my library. One that I knew immediately I wanted to pick up for sure. I wanted in my collection. Um, so I figured I'll slowly collect it and since I had bought Shadow Star, I went, you know what, I'll just pick up a couple volumes of Bokurano, uh, Bokurano R's as well. Then I picked up volume three of Children of the Sea, because again, I got this for very, very cheap, brand new. It was on like super sale. I think I paid like $8 for this. Um, and it's originally a $20 book in Canada. I've read the first volume from my library. It's five of these omnibuses in total. It's a very strange series. From what I remember of the first volume, it is bizarre. It's got beautiful color pages too. Um, about these kids that live in the ocean. There's these two boys. And then this girl is... I don't know what she's doing. I don't remember, honestly. I just remember the first volume being beautiful and very weird. Um, and so this was super cheap. And I will hopefully get the rest of them so I can read the series. Then... At my used comic book store, or not used, well, it was used, but at my local comic book store, I found volume nine of Vinland Saga um, for like $10, which was good because this one is originally $30. So I know that Vinland Saga is something I will buy. I just haven't bought any of it yet. And when I saw this for $10, I went, you know what? I'm going to grab this now. And when I get around to buying the rest of these volumes, I'll already have this one. So that's good. And also supporting my local comic book store. Um, and speaking of my local comic book store, <laughs> I went back and bought a bunch more of whatever they had of uh, Area 88 that I don't already have. So unfortunately not in order of what I needed because I have up to issue 18. So I skipped because they didn't have any of the middle ones. They had 22, 23, 24, 25, and then 30, 32, 34, uh, 38, 39, and 40. There is, I believe, 42 of these in total, which it was not complete in English. Viz was releasing these, started in the 80s, I believe. Um, and it's a story about this guy who's piloting these, um, like aircrafts for war. It's in a fictional country that they're at war and he is in this like contract for, I think, seven years that he has to go out and fight, 
um, and then after the seven years he can be released or if he I think there's some like stipulation if he um, maybe takes down a certain amount of planes or does a certain amount of missions or something that he gets to be released I don't remember it entirely but I remember that it is excellent and I hope with a lot more classic series being released right now I hope against hope that Area 88 gets picked up um, by somebody to to release it properly and fully because this is an excellent excellent series and unfortunately just never got finished and obviously um, you'd have to f track down these floppy ones to get it because this was the only way it was ever released but the art is very shoujo-esque which is funny because it's not a shoujo at all um, but it's so good and so compelling I cannot wait uh, to get the the issues that I'm missing because I just want to continue reading this so badly um, so hopefully my local comic book store will get some more of these in at some point I'll just have to keep my eye out and then I also bought while I was there uh, because I've already read it I bought one pound gospel whatever they had of it so they had the first um, what they call round one issue three and then they had most of round two uh, one pound gospel is a rumiko takahashi work which was released in four regular viz volumes later on um it is about this guy who's a boxer but he loves to eat so he can never make weight properly and so his trainer drives him drives his trainer nuts and he falls in love with this nun who of course cannot date uh because she's a nun and <laughs> It's just really fun, a really, really fun sports series that I read from my local library. The uh, singles are out of print, unfortunately. So again, with everything Rumiko Takahashi being reprinted right now, I really hope they'll do a nice edition of One Pound Gospel because I'll pick it up immediately. It was an excellent series. If you find it, buy it. Uh, I bought these because I think they're a lot of fun uh, in the floppies. They're only a dollar each, so I... You know, again, supporting my local comic book store and picking up some of these that since I've already read the series, if I just want to read through these, um, you know, it won't really matter because I already know what happens, uh, even though they're not like in order or anything. Also, they were never completed. The story was never complete in these floppy editions because they had caught up with Japan at the time. And then I guess by the time the next volume had come out in Japan, they just didn't continue releasing in the floppy editions. So, um, yeah, it was never complete this way, but I thought it was a fun way for me to kind of pick up the story uh, in case it doesn't get re-released in any way anytime soon. Then I can at least read some of these and get a, a feel for the, the comedy and the romance. It was a lot of fun. And then uh, the big purchase I made from my local comic book store, they had a lot of these old issues of An America Extra which is a manga magazine uh, that ran, uh, this one is, I believe, 1990, is it like 1998 maybe? It ran from the late 90s into the early 2000s, and they had a bunch of these, and the reason I wanted this is because of short program by Mitsuru Adachi. Um, so I didn't pick up every single issue that they had at the store because I only wanted the ones with short program and uh, marionette generation and then there was a couple other series in the later issues that I wanted so anyway um, Michiru Adachi did of course um, cross game which I loved and short program does have two volumes out um, it's a two volume series that Viz did release in um, regular volumes but those are out of print and I figured you know what support my local comic book store get a good series which i read all that i could out of this uh i'm missing a few but short program is a bunch of short stories so it didn't need to be chronological but this also has video girl i steam detectives fushigi yugi x 1999 um so there's a few different series in here that i can read and enjoy and then i wanted to get this one because marionette generation i'm missing volume one i have the rest of the volumes of it but i don't have volume one so i figured if i could pick up some of it in these an america extra issues then i can at least read volume one in this way and then read the rest of the ones that i own 
So they all came wrapped and I still have the wrapping for the other ones, but I was reading the other ones, which is why they're not wrapped right now. Um, but I will rewrap them up afterward. But yeah, these are excellent. I really, really love these. It's basically in the same vein as the old Shonen Jump magazines, um, which I also have a bunch of because I was subscribed to it. Uh, but yeah, this is really excellent. Uh, this one has uh, Revolutionary Girl Utena in it as well, and Chicago. Um, yeah, I'm super stoked that I found these. They were three dollars each, which is not super cheap when you bought as when you buy as many as I did. Um, but again, something it's a piece of history. This one's got banana fish in it, which I already own, but that's fine. Um, yeah, I mean, wasn't super cheap, but I I. I like to collect pieces of, of manga history, which this very much is. And there's quite a few series in here that I would love to check out in these magazines. And if I, you know, enjoy Fushigi Yugi or, or Revolutionary Girl Utena or Video Girl I, then maybe I'll track down the volumes for it. Um, but yeah, I basically wanted short program and uh, this one, like these have short program volume two. Uh, so I have most of volume two because I'm only missing one issue of short program that that contains a, a, an excerpt from short program two, but I'm missing most of short program one uh, or just short program, I guess. But yeah, I'm super stoked that I got these. There were a few there that I didn't buy, but I may go back and get them if they're still there. Um, and there's a beautiful Fushigi Yugi cover. And then I bought these last few because they had SOS, which is a short story uh, shoujo series, as well as Times 2, which is another short stories uh, series by Shoko Akira, who did Monkey High, which I love. And I wanted to read Times 2 for a very long time. So um, where is... there it is. Yeah, this is Times 2 in here. So I figured, again, short stories, so I probably won't miss out because of the fact that I'm missing quite a few issues in between, but I wanted these last few issues for Times 2 and SOS. Uh, and then this is the final An America Extra that was ever printed. Um, and by this point, it only had Times 2, Banana Fish, Fushigi Yugi, and SOS in it. Uh, so yeah, it was the last one that they printed. Um, so yeah, fun little piece of history that I am enjoying reading through. And yeah, I, I enjoy things like this. These are in really good condition. They're obviously wrapped. And again, I wanted to support my local comic book store. Um, so this wasn't something I would have tracked down in it by any means. But when I saw it, I just didn't want to leave it there. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm very happy with all the stuff I picked up. If you have any questions about anything that you saw, please let me know. If you would like me to do kind of a more in-depth video about these An America Extra issues or talk about them in any way or you have any questions, whatever, you want me to make a video, you know, let me know because um, I'm happy to do that. I just won't do it if nobody's interested. Um, but maybe I'll read a few more of the series that are in here and then kind of talk about it that way um, rather than... Like, I don't want to make an individual video for short program because I haven't read all of it, but I read what I have kind of thing. But maybe I'll do a video about these issues in general and, and just talk about some of the series in them and, and that sort of thing. But let me know. Anyway, thank you for watching.